Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. In this class everybody we are looking at IELTS speaking part one. The topic will be bikes and cars. Welcome Anna, hi Juan, good to see our members. Hi Stan, Nadia, Saranga, good to see students in the class. Everybody, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites that power these live classes. We use them all the time for our practice materials and to interact with our viewers. If you like these live classes, definitely join the premium version of the course. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. It's not a subscription model. We're an IDP affiliate. We are a British Council partner, an IELTS test registration center, and we help thousands of students every month succeed on their IELTS exams. You can check out their stories on the website for general IELTS gieltshelp.com. Again, just click that red button that's above my head there and begin learning for success. Uh, students, uh, you can use this code on the website PTWO9, P29, it's for part 29, to get a 10% discount. And the apps that link to the websites are Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. Uh, Instagram is IELTS underscore AE help and G IELTS help. Uh, if you want to get the uh, courses through YouTube, you can do that through Shopify. Just use this link. Lots of people joining in. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Abdul. Hi, Phyllis Fuang. Nice to see so many of you here with me today. Everybody speaking uh, to get that high band score, do lots of practice on the websites. We have lots of sample high band responses to these part one questions. Here's a blog that's on the website you can check out later. Um, I will put this link in the chat. Um, we have lots of these blogs for you. They give you kind of sample answers for these speaking part one um, sections of the exam so that you can get those higher scores. If you have questions, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. We love questions. We love helping students. Just ask. Um, everybody, right now, speaking part one, tomorrow we'll have task two writing for members and then we'll have reading for subscribers for these live classes. Saturday we'll have speaking part two for members on YouTube and on the website we'll do a live webinar on Saturday. It'll be speaking part three for everybody. All right. Um, if you're doing the IELTS, which I'm guessing most of you, if not all of you, are doing, then uh, make sure to check out this speaking part two video that we put up on YouTube. It will help you a lot for part two. Um, it's this video here. It will give you tips on um, how to answer the different uh, the different types of questions in part two, like talking about people or objects. So check that out. It's there for you on YouTube. Okay, everybody, let's get into our speaking. Uh, this is a speaking session, so make sure to speak and repeat. Copy what I say, copy how I say it. Go to your exam center early, everybody. One hour before your test starts, you should be at your exam center and you should be practicing with other IELTS aspirants. You should ask them, hey, are you here for the speaking interview? Would you like to practice a few questions with me just so that we get warmed up and we build our fluency? And I'm sure some of the candidates that are there will say, yes, thanks for asking. That is awesome. And then 20 minutes before your interview, you register and then you will go meet your examiner and the examiner 
Well, say welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. I will give you instructions for each of the three parts. I'm recording this for clerical purposes. This is exam center 97Y3Q in Vancouver. The time right now is seven o'clock. This is candidate number 9937721 and examiner number 89734. Let's begin. Can I see your identification? By this time, you should have been visualizing that, okay, this examiner is kind of like my grandpa or my grandma, my English speaking grandmother, grandfather. Uh, I have to speak loud to them, respectfully, clearly, professionally. They love me. I don't need to be nervous. I don't need to stress or freak out. And I have to speak in full sentences and give clear explanations because they have a very different understanding of the world than I do. They're two generations removed. They don't know social media, Instagram the same way I do. So I have to give good details without going off topic. So visualize. Visualize grandpa. Visualize grandma. Don't get nervous. There's no point. Okay, you're there to do a job. All right, Saiful. Did you get a band seven? I hope you did. Okay, now the examiner says, can I see your identification? Kyber says, yes, here's my identification card, which I used for registration. Please have a look. Perfect, Kyber, that's a nice full uh, sentence answer and that's exactly the kind of communication that the examiners love to hear. When the examiner hears an answer like yeah sure, they kind of get nervous about your answers. They're like oh I sure hope this individual gives me some good sentences later on. Okay. Sarab has this answer for us. Sarab says, yes, sure. Here is my passport. Please take a look. This is the absolute minimum answer that you should give to show that you are there to mean business. Okay, so absolute minimum. Okay, that's the minimum. Um, speak nice and clearly, okay? Uh, Deborah says, Shirley, here is my passport that I used to register for this exam. Please take a look at my credentials, right, Deborah? Um, yeah, that works, you can use Shirley. Anna says, yes, gladly, here is my passport which I have used for my registration recently. Please have a look. Nice. Okay, so look, there are so many different full sentence answers in the chat. Lots of those are looking great. That's what the examiner likes to hear. It shows them that you prepared for the exam, that you're there to speak and communicate, that you realize this isn't an English teacher. They're not an ESL teacher. They're not going to encourage you to speak more. They're going to ask you questions, you answer the way you answer, and they will give you a score. They're not going to say, can you please speak a little bit more? They might ask you why, or can you give me some more details, but they're not going to encourage you and motivate you to speak more. It's not their job. They're just there to measure your communication, okay? Alexander, I like that answer. I'm gonna put that answer up there too. Alexander says, yes, with pleasure. Uh, there's my passport, which I used for this test's registration. Yeah, that works. So many ways to give nice full sentence answers to that question. So why wouldn't you? Okay, and then the next question, while you're holding your passport, since COVID, the protocol is that you kind of like hold your passport like this, and then you go, yes, sure. Here's my passport I used for registration. Please take a look. Here are my credentials. And then while you're holding it like this, the examiner will say, what is your full name? And you should hold your passport like this while you say your full name. So you should say, 
Uh, my full name is Sandra McKinley. Uh, please call me by my nickname, Sandy. Okay. So that works. Hi, Chen. Welcome to our chat moderator. Chen, good to see you in the class. All right. So um, what is your full name? Give your full name and don't just say, I am Sandra McKinley. That's kind of funny. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sandra McKinley. Um, so nice full sentences. My given name is Sandra and my surname, surname is family name. Surname is uh, McKinley. Uh, please call me by my nickname, Sandy. Okay, tell them what you want to be called or they will ask you. When you tell them what you want to be called, again, it shows that you prepared, that it is not your first rodeo. You prepared for the exam. Okay. Meme says, why do you want to see that? Well, they just want to make sure that you are who you say you are. Um, people have tried a lot of tricks and ways to cheat the IELTS exam, which of course is a terrible idea because it's an internationally recognized exam. So you can lose your travel privileges and all kinds of trouble can happen if you try to cheat on the IELTS exam. And people in the past have actually found doppelgangers to sit the uh, speaking section for them. Does everybody know what a doppelganger is? It's a fair question. It's like when I register, I show my passport online. When I go in 20 minutes early and check in, I show my passport. So why do I have to show my passport to the guy again? Well, it's because they want to make sure that you are not a doppelganger. Everybody knows what that means. A doppelganger. <laughs> Juan says it's a person who looks exactly like you. Yeah, it's basically your twin. Okay. Doppel, doppelganger. It's one word, I believe. There we go. Two P's. Doppelganger. A person who looks very much like you. It's your twin in the universe. So that's why I mean, that's why they, <laughs> yeah, kind of like an imposter, Yusuf. That's your doppelganger. Um, so that's why they want to see your passport and really carefully look at you to make sure you haven't hired a doppelganger to uh, sit the IELTS exam. They actually pay attention to nuances, like how fluently do you say your name? Do you make any mistakes? Do you give yourself a weird nickname? Are you not able to say your birth date if they suddenly ask you? So yeah, they check, they make sure you are you. Okay, so again, everybody, uh, the first couple questions, don't make mistakes. A lot of students go, oh, who cares about these? I heard that you don't get marked on these anyway. Not officially. But of course the examiner is paying attention to how you speak from the time you open your mouth. Um, so you need to make sure that you are speaking fluently with confidence and accurately. You don't want to make mistakes. It's hard to convince the examiner that you're a band nine level user of English if you're having difficulty giving sentences for can I show or can I see your identification and what is your full name? So again, just practice these, say them with confidence, say them without mistakes, okay? And then the examiner will say, uh, now I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better. Uh, do you work or study? Okay, give a nice full sentence answer. If you do one of these, then talk about that for a sentence or two. If you do the other, talk about that. If you do both, talk about both. I do both. I am currently in my third year of engineering at the University of uh, British Columbia and I'm also working uh, part-time at IKEA uh, to make ends meet. Make ends meet means you can pay for your groceries, your uh, home, your rent, 
your close, okay? So again, nice full sentence answers for these, okay? Do you work or study? Again, remember everybody, repeat. I do both. Notice how that's like almost like one word. I do both. I do both. English has this interesting um, feature of linking words together almost seamlessly when it's a very common phrase. I do both. I do both. So do you work or study? I do both. I am currently in my third year of engineering at the University of British Columbia. And I'm also working part time at Ikea to make ends meet. All right, Juan has an answer for us. Juan says, I've been studying for the IELTS exam for a few months and I work as a high school sub teacher. Yeah, now I probably wouldn't do an abbreviation um, so early on in the interview and I think the examiners do like to hear you use those nice advanced words. Uh, does everybody know what the word sub means here? I work as a sub. Sub is an abbreviation for what? Anybody know? I see some nice answers there. Shah Rub says, currently I am a working professional. I graduated from Singad College of Engineering with a bachelor's degree in computer engineering. Since then, I have been working as an analyst at Accenture. Very nice. Anna says, a double teacher. Uh, not quite, Anna. That's that would I think for me that would mean that you're a teacher's aide or a teacher's assistant. Uh, no, nowhere has it right. Sub means here a substitute. Okay, it's a stand-in. Stand-in teacher when the regular uh, teacher is absent. Like the teacher caught a cold. Another teacher has to come in to teach the class. That's called a substitute teacher. Okay, and we often say sub teacher. All right, good. And then the examiner will ask you the next question. They will say, what is your favorite food? Don't overthink it, people. Please don't be like, okay, well, um, I like a lot of different types of food. Uh, like um, burgers, uh, hot dogs, uh, pasta, um, mushroom soup. Okay, don't do that. No, no. Okay. Um, IELTS is not a journey of self discovery. Please don't do that. Okay. So just decide on one answer quickly, give a good explanation, and include an example. And move on. Okay. Yeah, exactly, Fuang. The examiner might be thinking, oh boy, here comes some weird templated answer that somebody saw online and now they're trying to copy and minus minus points, okay? Um, what is your favorite food? Okay, Anna says, I'm into Italian food because I'm a big fan of eating pasta. It's easy to cook and it's a mouth mastering dish for me. Um, Almost, Anna. Let me fix that a little bit. Okay. So this is Anna's answer. It could be a cuisine, like Italian food, sure. Or it could be just one food, like pizza. Okay. Maybe don't be too cliche. Okay. I'm into Italian food because I'm a big fan of eating pasta. Don't use because twice. Okay. Careful with that. It's easy to cook. And um, it's a mouth... Watering dish, I would say. 
uh, Anna in this case, means that it's so delicious that you salivate. Mouth watering dish. Even today in the morning, I ate pasta for my breakfast, getting those carbs in you, right? For my breakfast. Sure, that's a good answer now, okay? Uh, mouth watering means it's so delicious that uh, you're salivating. The slimy liquid in your mouth is called saliva. Okay, saliva. Yes, Romelia could be considered a scrumptious, scrumptious dish. There's a pronunciation disaster. Scrumptious dish. Absolutely. All right. Joe Shield says, well, there are numerous foods. Uh, in this case, you can use the plural, which I like. Um, but the most favorite food for me is mutton chicken. And last week I ate with my closest friend in a well-known grilled chicken restaurant. All right, Jashil. So again, instead of numerous foods, which I like, but the most, so instead of this kind of language, okay, which examiners consider to be templates, it's better to take that time and instead of giving this kind of content, which doesn't get you any band scores, it doesn't earn you any points on the exam, what should you do, everybody? So let's tell Joe Shill what, what we think Joe Shill should do to, to get a better band score. So this would be like a band seven. It's good English if you're fluent and you say this. It's like a band seven, but it's not considered great. English or very good English, okay? Band 8 is very good English. Band 9 is expert English. This is considered good English when you say this fluently. Well, there are numerous foods which I like, but my most favorite food is mutton chicken. And last week I ate it with uh, my closest friend in a uh, well-known grilled chicken restaurant. Okay, so instead of this kind of template, what should be in this sentence to help it move from a band seven to a band nine. Okay, because it's a bit template-y this way, right? Okay. Kyber, thanks for sharing that. No, it's good to see. I wondered if that was the same Kyber. Lots of respect to you as well, Kyber. Good for you for hanging in there. What should you do? Dia says, give the recipe. <laughs> no, that would be off topic. The examiner will interrupt you. Don't give the recipe. Chen says, just start with the direct response. There's something clearly missing from this, and the examiner will catch that every time when it's missing. So <clears throat> let's say that um, Joshil starts here my favorite food okay so uh let's say that just starts here my favorite food for me is my favorite food is uh mutton chicken and last week i ate it with my closest friend in a well-known grilled chicken restaurant um uh, yeah fuang's got the right idea so fuang says explain it why do you like that food i love the succulent uh taste of a well prepared uh, chicken uh, breast with yummy seasoning. Okay, so some kind of um, an explanation, and then you've got a band nine. Okay. And now you're using, of course, vocabulary that's original and new for the examiner, like the word succulent taste. Okay, that's an, as soon as you use a collocation like that, the examiner is going to be like, ooh, nice language. I love the succulent tastes of a well-prepared uh, 
uh, chicken breast. So again, another nice collocation there with yummy seasoning, right? So all of those are getting you points and closer to that very good and expert level of language. And that's what you want to do is that kind of explanation. So take out the templates, replace templates with good explanations, good examples, and you go up a band score. Keep that in mind, everybody. Tip, uh, when you replace uh, templated uh, responses with good explanations and examples, I guarantee your band score will jump by at least one band. Okay, so instead of trying to think in your head of like, oh, what was that cool template I can use here? Think about, oh, what's a cool explanation I can use here? Or what's a good example I can give here, right? Okay, then the examiner will say, uh, let's talk about cars and bikes. Okay, now as soon as you hear the word cars and bikes, uh, try to think about synonyms in your head for these nouns. So when the uh, examiner introduces the topic of part one, usually it's a general topic, then immediately try to think of synonyms for that. So what's another way to say car? What's another way to say bike? Okay, give me some, uh, give me some synonyms. What are other ways? There you go. Juan says it's a vehicle. Sure. Chen says it's also called an automobile. Automobile. Don't say auto. Um, two wheelers. Eh, don't use it so much for bikes. Okay. We don't really use two wheelers or four wheelers, at least not in North America. I don't know about the Brits and the Aussies. I haven't heard my Aussie or Brit friends use two wheeler or four wheeler all that often, so I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Um, Trunk says bicycle. Yep. Okay. Mm, could be a motorbike, sure. We didn't specify what kind of a bike. All right, think about specific types as well, right? So um, what types of vehicles do you know? What are some types of vehicles? Types. Uh, what types of vehicles do you know? What types of bicycles do you know? The examiner will love to hear you use some of those words. Okay, Saman says there are SUVs, which is a sports utility vehicle. There are trucks, yep, absolutely. Um, Suman says MTB, I think you mean um, mountain bikes. Okay, there are sedans. Very good, Muhammad Ali. Sedan. Sedan's your typical four-door. We don't say five-door. The fifth is a trunk. We don't call that a door in U.S. or Canada anyway. It's a four-door sedan. Okay. Uh, Mercedes or Ferrari, those are makes and models, right? Okay. Um, for bikes, you've got mountain bikes, you've got cruisers, you've got road bikes, road bikes are your racing bikes. Ah, Teddy says, hey, let's not forget the family classic, the van or the minivan. All right, okay, students. So uh, a lot of those words should be popping into your head as the examiner introduces this topic of let's talk about cars and bikes. Okay. Let's do it. Um, do you know how to ride a bicycle? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. I'll give you an answer and then we'll see how you do. I'll give you like a band nine sample answer. You give me some nice full sentence answers. Yes, I do. I'm fortunate that my dad had <clears throat> taught me to ride a bike at the age of five and I've been uh, riding bikes ever since. <clears throat> Currently, I own a converted mountain bike with road tires that I use to get to work on fair weather days.
There you go. Just kind of made that up. I'm actually in my home office, so I don't really ride the, <laughs> the bike to work, but that examiner doesn't know that. Why not? Um, so do you know how to ride a bicycle? Yes, I do. I am fortunate that my dad had taught me to ride a bike at the age of five, and I've been riding bikes ever since. Notice the use of past perfect, present perfect, progressive, present, okay, more present, lots of grammar. So here the examiner's going, okay, grammatical range, check, 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 grammatical accuracy, check, check, and check. And that's how you pick up those points for those high band scores, okay? <laughs> Kevin, being very forward with the examiner, says, of course I can. Riding a bike is so easy for me that when there is no oncoming traffic or pedestrians. I can do it with my eyes closed. I can even perform stunts like riding without using my hands. Um, bonus point of the day, if somebody can tell me this, what is it called when you can lift your bike off the ground and kind of do like a jump with a bike? Anybody know that? Who wants to pick up a bonus point? Okay, bonus point time. What is it called when you do a jump with your bike on a flat surface? Okay, it is not a wheelie. I'll tell you what a wheelie is. Wheelie is different, okay, so wheelie is when you lift uh, your front uh, tire off the ground and bike. It's also called a catwalk. But when you do a little jump with your bike, you pull your bike off the ground and you do a jump, it's got a different name. Nobody's got it yet. Nobody's picked up that bonus point. What is it? Mmm. Karim. Wabam. You get it. You got it. Two thumbs up. It's called a bunny hop. You bunny hop. Romalia found it too. Romalia says it's a bunny hop. It is a bunny, uh, by the way, for those of you like, what's a bunny? <laughs> a bunny is a cute little rabbit. Okay. All right, Karem, good job. Bunny hop. So Kevin says, of course I can. Riding a bike is so easy for me that when there's no oncoming traffic or pedestrians, I can do it with my eyes closed. I can even perform stunts like riding without using my hands, wheelies, and bunny hops. All right. Good work. All right, everybody, and then the examiner might ask you something like, uh, how often do you ride a bike? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Students, remember your qualitative and quantitative language. Hint, hint, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, okay? So remember your qualitative and quantitative. Okay, so for instance, I often uh, ride my bike, I would say at least uh, four to uh, five times a day. Not only is it convenient, for commuting to work, but it is also a fantastic way for me to be environmentally friendly 
while getting fresh air and exercise. So I ride my bike every chance I get. Okay, there is a nice full sentence answer for you. Okay, how often do you ride a bike? I often ride my bike. Answer it directly, use the question. I often ride my bike. I would say at least four to five times a day. Not only is it convenient for commuting to work, but it is also a fantastic way for me to be environmentally friendly while getting fresh air and exercise. So I ride my bike every chance I get. All right, let's see. Um, Sehaj, I think you're jumping ahead there. Careful. All right. Let's take Fuang's answer here. Fuang says, I usually ride my bicycle for both uh, some workout in the morning and to go to the grocery store. So I can say I use my bike at least two to three times per day and a dozen times per week. Yesterday, I spent two hours cycling in the morning with my besties around Bin Tan District in HCM, Ho Chi Minh City. All right, nice answer, Fuang. Some slight grammatical mistakes, but overall it was good. Okay, I usually ride my bicycle for both um, fitness, I would say here, uh, in the morning and to go to the grocery store. So I can say I use my bike at least two to three times per day and a dozen times per week. And I would say, and at least a dozen times per week. Yesterday I spent two hours cycling in the morning with my besties around Bin Than District in Ho Chi Minh City. Now it's great. Okay. Near Mid says, I have an IELTS test tomorrow. Any advice for me to score better? Near Mid, yes, absolutely. Use English. So use English as much as possible leading up to your exam. Keep your brain flowing and thinking in English. That's my number one tip for you. Show up to your exam center early so that you can get comfortable with your surroundings and use English. Talk English, uh, use English only for at least a couple hours before your test. Do that and you'll do great. Okay. You're very welcome, uh, Fuang. Okay, uh, next question. How often do you use a car? Okay. Um, somewhat similar to my bike, I use my sedan uh, quite frequently. I would say at least a dozen times during the week when I have to travel uh, greater distances. and to pick up uh, groceries uh, for my family or to take the kids to their programs like uh, piano and uh, swimming. For these purposes, the uh, car is much more convenient uh, than the bike. Okay. So um, there's my full sentence answer. How often do you use a car? And these answers, like I often get this question is, how long should my answers be? About this long, okay? So two to three sentences, roughly 60 words, 50, 60 words per answer. Somewhat like my bike, I use my sedan quite frequently. Notice that all of those nouns are coming in real handy now. I would say at least a dozen times during the week when I have to travel greater distances and to pick up groceries for my family or to take the kids to their programs like piano and swimming. Uh, for these purposes, the car is much more convenient than the bike. Okay, Sung Chandra says, I rarely 
uh, use a car as it is really crowded in the city and there are lots of traffic. jams especially during peak hours i use either a motorbike or public transportation instead good that's a good answer song i like it okay it's nice clear original good explanation great answer say it fluently you'll get a fantastic score okay global classroom has this answer for us global classroom says I use my car very often. Uh, often is good. If you want to say very often, you should say always. Um, I use, we, off, we don't really use um, adverbial um, adjectives uh, with um, adverbs of frequency, like always, often, sometimes. Um, so we don't use words like very, <laughs> You hear it in everyday conversation like very often, but it's kind of awkward English. So um, it's more accurate to say I use my car often because in an Indian family, we only have one car. So that is mostly used by my parents. So when I get a chance, I drive it to my neighborhood. Okay, that's kind of unclear. I'm not sure where you're going with that. Um, I use my car often because my family has a one car that we share so even though and even though I have to do quite a bit of correction here to make sense of this and even though it is used mostly by my parents um, whenever I get a chance I drive it around my neighborhood I would say at least five, six times a week, okay? So something like that, all right? So Global Classroom, quite a few kind of corrections there, not just to the grammar and the language use, but also to the content to be coherent. So I understand clearly what you're saying because it's confusing when you tell me that you often use your car, but your parents use it mostly. It's kind of like, well, is it you who's using the car or is it your parents using the car? What's going on here? Or do you mean like you are sitting in the car when your parents are driving? All of that has to be clearly explained, okay? So I use my car often because my family has one car that we share and even though it is used mostly by my parents, uh, whenever I get a chance, I drive it around my neighborhood. I would say at least five, six times a week, okay? So that's much, much more accurate. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, everybody. We've got four more questions here, each one more difficult than the previous. Here are the questions. I'm going to read them, and then I will get volunteers to answer these questions verbally using our websites. I will show you how, and you can do this for free. Okay, here we go. So the questions are, where do you usually go by bicycle or car? Is driving in your city easy or difficult? Why? When is it better to use a bike than a car? If you could buy any car, what would it be and why? Students, let's go to the website. Again, on those websites, if you decide to use the premium version, you can join that and use this code P29 for a 10% discount. Um, go to the website. Chen, if you're still here, if you could just throw the instructions into the chat, the website is aehelp.com. You can register a free or a paid account there. Uh, and then you can log into your My Student account. I'll show you what to do from there. 
So this is the website here. Again, to join the premium version, just click that big red button right above my head. Um, Chen has put the instructions uh, step by step into the chat. Thank you, Chen. Um, and then once you have joined, you have a My Student account. In your My Student account, you have your student partner speaking. You also have the opportunity to book a full mock speaking interview with that yellow button that's just underneath it. Below that, you have your live class button, um, which we will use this Saturday. And below that, you have Test Glider, which is one of our partners. And if you're looking for practice exams, Test Glider is the way to go. No question about it. It's AI assisted uh, IELTS exams. Awesome piece of software. Um, for those of you that have the premium version of our course, I highly recommend getting that as well. Okay, anyway, for right now, let's uh, click on the student partner speaking. You've got all the tools on the website here that you need to uh, really master the IELTS exam and also for great English practice and improvement. Okay, let's do this. So uh, once you're in here, um, you have uh, your peers joining in. We can see Ivan, Muhammad Ali, Danielle, Anna, Deborah, Anahita. Of course, premium students, you see them in bold with the... Um, with the uh, tag premium student so premium students always use this to interact with each other kevin's in there as well now also and when you see these little orange numbers coming up that means that um these candidates or these members are volunteering uh to interact uh, my handle is master so you're going to find me in here Look for master, all capital letters, and then the blue envelope that's right beside my handle. Uh, click on that and send me a message like Anna has. So let's see here. Anna says, hello, Adrian. And I know Anna said she checked and fixed her microphone, so all is good there. Let's reach out to Anna. Anna, are you ready? And then I can send you a message like this and we can practice some questions. Anna says, yes. Hi, Anna. Hello, do you hear me today? I use the Microsoft browser Edge. I can hear you loud and clear, Anna. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Like the, the last days at work before New Year, and it's, it's like crazy, all these tasks, all these assignments. Yep, we're all trying to catch up and start New Year with a positive vibe, a feeling of completion. I know that myself. All right, Anna, um, as we head into the New Year's, are you ready for some questions? Yes, I'm ready okay. to answer your question. All right, let's do it. So, uh, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. We're conducting this test in Odessa. The time right now is 17 o'clock. Let's begin. Uh, may I see your identification? Yes, gladly. Here is my passport, which I've used recently for my registration. Please have a look at my credentials. What is your full name? Uh, my first name is Anna and my family name is Popova. Please call me by my first name, Anna. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Do you work or study? Uh, currently, I am working in, in, in a legal firm called the International Bureau of uh, Legal Assistance as a lawyer and I have been doing this job for two years. What is your favorite food? Uh, I'm into Italian food and uh, I adore eating uh, pasta because it's simple to cook and uh, I like this taste of uh, pasta and even today in the morning I ate pasta um, for my breakfast. Let's talk about cars and bikes. Do you know how to ride a bicycle? Yes, definitely. I know how to ride the bicycle because I rode uh, a bike first when I was six years old girl and um, in average I, ride, I have been riding a bicycle for 20 years. How often do you use a car? 
Mm, I frequently use a car because it saves my time when I, I need to go to a, a center of Odessa and at least I use my car five times uh, per week. If you could uh, buy any car, what would you buy and why? Uh, given the chance, I would buy uh, a car from the brand Audi because it's a speedy car and it uh, also has an automatic machine which I can uh, use uh, to, to help myself um, to learn how to drive uh, better because because it has some special uh, IT technology which helps um, um, young drivers how to learn driving successfully. Okay, that is the end of part one. All right. Um, I will give you some feedback, Anna. So, Anna, that was really good. Um, Anna, for everybody who's kind of tuning in, is a student who's with us regularly, practices lots, applies strategy, and that's very clear. You did a really good job speaking in full sentences, speaking fluently, intelligently, using grammar, using various vocabulary, um, tackling the questions with confidence. That was really good. Um, if I consider all of your answers except the last one, I would say that it's easily a band 8 to 8.5, even getting closer to a 9, Anna. So that was really good. Um, with the last question considered, yeah, it's I would say, yeah. yeah, with the last question considered, I would say that was closer to like a band uh, 6.5 yeah. on the last question. Of course, it's a much more difficult question, right? Um, yeah. It's a conditional question, plus it's a very specific question. It's asking, it's testing to see how well you can talk about a specific brand or type of car. So much more challenging to do that. Nevertheless, you did a good job using the conditions. So the question is if you could buy any car, okay? Yeah. And you said, given the chance, I would buy a car from the brand Audi. It's a little bit awkward. You can say that simpler, Anna, and more natural. Um, how would you say that in a more natural way? Just, just first. I would, I would buy a car Audi, Audi, Audi vehicle. Uh, even simpler. Given the chance, I would buy an Audi. And Audi, yeah. Okay. All right. Now, um, Audi is the brand, right? Yeah. Do you, do you have a model in mind, like a model uh, of Audi? A sport car. Sport car. Okay. Um, so, given the chance, I would buy an Audi TT. Let's see. T TT is their small coupe sports car, I think. Um, so, given the chance, I would buy an Audi TT or an Audi sports car. Even that is fine. Okay. Mm hmm yeah. Right. And then you said because it's a speedy car and then I couldn't understand the rest of it perfectly clearly. You said it's a speedy car and it also has, did you mean like automatic shifting? Yeah, automatic shifting. This display, this it has a display which helps you to see narrow um, field, how much distance it has between different cars when you are parking, when you need to like to use in different narrow streets. Yeah, it's, so know. there's wor there are technical words for that and it's tricky. Even for me, I have to really think about like, mm, okay, what is that called again, right? So yeah. um, because it's a speedy car and it also has automatic um, shifters. Um, I think they all often have paddle shifters. Mm -hmm. especially the sports cars paddle shifters means they're on the uh, steering wheel so you don't have to use your hand below but you can actually shift off of the steering wheel uh, paddle uh, automatic uh, automatic shifting let's just call it because it's going to be mm -hmm. manual shifting um, and it has some special uh, technology it's called driver assistance Ah, oh, driver assistant. Yeah, I heard mm. about this, but thank God. Well, that's okay. So the message here, and everybody's like, well, "Why is Adrian going into so much detail here?" There is a reason. Okay, um, in the IELTS exam. So Anna, if you and I are sitting in a coffee shop and we're talking about this, absolutely go into these details. And if you're not sure, I can sit there and help you with the language, mm -hmm. and I can say, "Oh, I think Anna, what you're saying is driver assistance." 
um, technology that helps uh, drivers uh, to uh, stay safe, right? Um, so, but in the IELTS exam, you should not go into those kinds of details. Don't trap yourself in a difficult situation. So in the IELTS, keep it a little bit more superficial. Do you know what that means to keep it superficial? Um, to, to keep it more efficient, effective, effective, superficial. Yeah. Superficial means like simpler, like say, because it's a speedy car and it has a nice leather interior, right? So something a little bit simpler, like don't dig yourself into a difficult context, like explaining the technology that's included in the Audi, right? So in the IELTS, keep it. So you don't want to use templates, but you also don't want to go into like really specific details. So in the IELTS, yeah. keep it a bit superficial. Um, I, I am like with vocabulary when I don't know, I have an idea, but don't know how to explain this for, for vocabulary, like in advanced level or some modern vocab about some IT technology. Yeah. yeah. And you know, in these classes, that's what you want to do is you want to explore and check and that's how you get reminded of oh yeah it's called driver assistance right yeah. um, or driver assisted technology um, but in the real IELTS you don't want to be testing your English so you don't want to be like oh do I know the word for that or not right so you just want to go with the simple easy so let's try repeating both and this is for everybody so everybody repeat both of these versions the version that I would recommend for the IELTS and the version that we learn in class so let's start with the version for IELTS okay ready Nana? yes yes okay so given the chance I would buy an Audi sports car because it's speedy and has a very comfortable leather interior. I just love the look of this car. Uh, give the chance I would buy an Audi sports car because it's speedy and it has a beautiful uh, interior uh, look in this car. Yeah, some nice leather seats. And it has uh, so nice leather seats. Okay, perfect. So again, a little bit superficial for IELTS, right? Now, when you're practicing at home, sure, absolutely, learn the language. So given the chance, I would buy an Audi sports car because it's speedy and it has automatic shifting with some special driver assistance technology that helps people stay safe. Mm -hmm. Try that one. Um, okay. Uh, give, uh, like in, you've written in the Word document. Yeah, on the, on the exactly. I'll say it one more time, chance? Anna. I would buy a, an Audi sports car because it's a speedy car and it has automatic shifting and it has some special driver assistance technology that helps people to stay safe. Okay, good. So for sure, when you're practicing, go for that one. When you're in the IELTS, play it safe, okay? Yeah, All I right. will definitely learn this answer. I, uh, which answer which you corrected me, I have a special notebook and I like uh, learn this via this answers, like uh, note it down these answers and to try to repeat this again no, to, to help myself to have this in his natural speech yeah. every day. And now, exactly. And now you'll be able to use it even in the aisles, of course, right? That's why we practice it. Anna, thank you so much for volunteering. And I hope that you get that dream car Audi of yours one of these days. You deserve it. Yeah. Because my father bought another car, like a second car, and they disagree with his choice. I, I hope, yes. <laughs> I will a have a perfect, bright Audi car in the future. Yeah. I hope so. All right. Bye, Anna. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> right, that was Anna. Let's give Anna a thumbs up in the chat, everybody. Support each other, okay? Uh, since being, I'm flattered. I just don't spam, okay? All right. Um, students, uh, let me just grab another um, person here. Um, Danielle, one of our other premium students. Danielle, we don't hear from you all that often. So yes, you can contribute. Yes, of course. Are you ready? So Danielle, um, if you're ready, let me know and then we can uh, connect to each other and uh, we can practice some of these uh, questions. 
Hope you're still hanging out. Yes. Yes, here we go. Hi, Daniel. Uh, hey, Adrian. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I am also doing fantastic. I'm glad you're back and practicing. It's fantastic. Uh, basically, it's my uh, first time uh, interacting with you. I know, I've seen you in the chat before, but I, yeah, I, I, I couldn't remember if you had a chance uh, to speak or not. Basi basically, I'm working uh, full time. So uh, because of my uh, busy routine, I'm uh, not able to interact with you. But you're here now and you're speaking and that is fantastic. Yes. Um, Danielle, where are you? What part of the world? I'm from Pakistan. Oh, and you're in Pakistan. Okay. And what is your job? What what keeps you so busy? Uh, I'm a full-time blockchain developer and I'm doing a crypto trading too for some extra money. Oh, wow. Okay. You're on the cutting edge of currency. <laughs> um, yes. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> I, I do think it's the way of the future, but uh, we won't digress there. All right. Um, okay. Well, let's get into some questions. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's talk about um, bikes and cars. How often do you ride a bike? Uh, yes, I have learned to ride a uh, ride a, a bicycle, but now I'm not riding bicycle too much. But I have a nice bike which I'm riding on the daily basis uh, for uh, my uh, for to go for uh, to my work. And, How often do you use a car? Uh, uh, if I talk about uh, uh, using a car, uh, yes, I don't often use uh, use my car. Uh, uh, I use my car. Uh, let's uh, you can say uh, once or twice in a week. As I uh, love to ride a bike, so I uh, often use bike rather than car. When is it better to use a bike than a car? Uh, basically, if you want to go in uh, some crowdy places, it's better to use bike instead of car. Why? Uh, because uh, because if you car, you can stuck in traffic jams. But uh, if you will go on bike, it will easy to uh, uh, easy. Uh, it will easy to uh, get out of uh, traffic jam. Uh, Rather than rather than uh, that uh, of using the car. Okay. Good. First time. I can tell you're a little bit nervous, which is totally yes. fine. <laughs> it's hard to speak yes. when we're nervous. Uh, um, yeah. Basically, uh, my uh, English is a little bit uh, fluent because of I uh, uh, often interact with uh, my clients, which are from. Uh, us and europe yeah and it's great that you're using english um in your yeah. work that will that will certainly help you um yes. always really just uh you know pay attention to using fluent correct english when yes. you make mistakes listen back i know that often those work calls are recorded for quality assurance right so in many of these mm -hmm. jobs people are like mm -hmm. i'm recording this conversation for quality assurance yes. is that okay do you record your calls yes. Yes, we often record it. Okay. And do you have a chance to listen to those calls? Uh, yes, uh, I listen, but not so often. All right, that's a very nice, honest answer. <laughs> so, so what I recommend that you do, um, and not necessarily to improve your work per se, but for your English, is if you have a chance to okay. listen to some of those calls, for like 30 minutes before or after yes. your job. And I know like probably by the time you finish your work, you just want to go home and relax. Yes. But yes. if you have a chance to, you know, especially if you catch a couple conversations where you're like, oh, that was a bit of an interesting conversation. Um, try to listen to that call or listen to that conversation and check your English. It's a great yes. way to hit two birds with one stone because you're checking your workflow, your ability to help your clients, your customers, and you're checking your English. So you want to check for grammatical mistakes, word use mistakes, right? Like this one yes. here, when I said, when is it better to mm -hmm. use a bike than a car? And you said, basically, mm -hmm. if you want to go. 
Um, make sure you're using the correct pronoun. So it's not if you, in this case, if I want to go, right? Okay. Um, so always use that accurate pronoun. So if I want yeah. to go uh, to some crowded places, not crowdy, but crowded okay. places, it's better to use my bike uh, than a okay. car because if I drive, you said if I car, uh, that's not a verb, right? It's a noun. Mm -hmm. So if I mm -hmm. drive, um, yeah. I can get stuck in traffic jams. Um, and uh, if I use a bike, I can avoid, mm -hmm. not get out of, I can avoid traffic jams. Yes. If I use a bike, I can avoid. <clears throat> Uh, traffic jams and save uh, half an hour to an hour. <clears throat> okay, you're doing a good job with the numbers. Uh, you said once or twice, which is really good. If I use a bike, I can avoid traffic jams and save an hour of commute time. Okay, so just repeat the sentence after me. Basically, if I want to go to some <clears throat> crowded places like downtown, it's better to use my bike than a car because if I drive, I can get stuck in traffic jams. Basically, if I want to go uh, go in uh, some crowded places, it bet, uh, uh, it's better to use uh, use uh, my bike uh, than a car because if I drive, I can get stuck in traffic jams. If I use a bike, I can avoid. I uh, I can avoid traffic jams and save an hour of commute time. Yeah. And um, if you don't want to use traffic jams so much, you can say vehicle pileups. Okay. It's a weird but interesting way to say traffic jams. Yes. Vehicle pileups. It's interesting too. Repeat after me. Vehicle pileups. Vehicles pileups. 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 Yeah, or bumper to bumper pileups. Bumper to bumper pileups. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Well, that was really good, Danielle. I'm glad that you um, volunteered. Is it Danielle or Daniel? Uh, Daniel. Uh, basically, uh, uh, if you spell it, it's da uh, Daniel, D A N I Y A L. Mm -hmm. And uh, Daniel uh, spell D A N I E L. Mm -hmm. It's different. Got you. That's what I was thinking. That's why I asked how, uh, the pronunciation. Okay, Daniel, uh, thank you so much for volunteering. Keep up the good studies. Check those recordings to help you improve your English and your customer service relations. You, you, I think you'll benefit from that. I will show. I will okay. show Jack, uh, them next time. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Have an awesome day and come back again and volunteer more, okay? That way you'll build lots of confidence, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye for now. Bye. All right, let's give Daniel a big thumbs up. That was fantastic. Some great work there. Okay, students, I'm just going to refresh my page here um, as uh, many of us have been hitting the servers. So uh, I think my WebSocket there timed out and um, refresh my list of people who are still with me. I think it's, it's uh, Juan, yeah, it's not that the site is crashing. It's that it's um, the web server kind of locks out um, after a while because there's a lot of us hitting it, which is fine. Also, students leave and come, so it's actually good that I refresh the page so that I know who's still actually here. Now, let's see if I can message Deborah or not. I'm gonna try to do my best here, everybody. Give me one moment and I will do the needful for all of us to rejoin. Okay, so everybody, again, who's joining up, all you have to do is go to aehelp.com, click this student partner speaking, okay? And then once you're there, uh, you will have this lovely list of people. Uh, Kevin, we haven't heard from you in a while. Let's check in with <laughs> Kevin says, I want to volunteer, please. Sure, are you ready? Um, and then in the student partner speaking, you'll find your peers and others who you can practice with. Uh, Kevin, let me try to, oh, let me see if I can call you. Here we go. Oh, sorry, it's Mohammed for Kevin there. There we go. All right.
Hello? Hi, Kevin. How have you been? Oh, no, Mr. Adrian. <laughs> the life hasn't been great for me, but I'm still hanging in there. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Well, that's not, that's not, too, that's, I'm not too happy to hear that. What's going on? Oh, no, I just don't want to whine on your channel. I'm <laughs> Fair <laughs> both enough. relationships and, and work, but again, I'm really happy to, to go to your, to your class. It's actually my happy place. So I'm really hoping that, uh, like this difficult time will, or this tough time will, will just will blow will over. Pass. Absolutely. I guarantee you that it will. It always does, especially when you stay positive. And it sounds like you're doing everything in your power to do that, to stay positive. Yeah. Um, one you. great advice that my father gave me growing up was life is not about how hard we fall, but about how fast we get up. Yeah. How we react to it. I yeah. See life is not about how hard we fall but about how fast we get up and it sounds like uh, you get up nice and fast so that's good uh, good for you I can only um, encourage you. you and motivate you Thank to you. do that so and I'm and I'm very flattered that you're telling me that this is your happy place that's good I'm, I'm glad um, and uh, I'm glad that we can be here for you all right Kevin well let's jump in so you're still in uh, Vietnam is it Yes, I'm going to the UK next year in June. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm really grateful that you still remember that. Mm -hmm. June of 2024, you're in the UK. Yes. Awesome, awesome. That's fantastic. So there's definitely some positive outlook um, and some new exciting twists and turns in life, right? Okay, uh, let's do this, Kevin. Let's jump into a few questions. Are you ready? Yes, yes, I am. All right, let's do it. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about cars and bikes uh where do you usually go by bicycle or car i usually use cars to reach destinations on the outskirts of my city or like farther from there apart from faster trips cars also protect me from all the dust breathing in all the dust in the air which can irritate my nose i also love like the massage functions of car seats like some rollers just kneading and gliding the joints around my neck to prevent stiffness when I am on the move. Is driving in your city easy or difficult? Saying that driving in my city Hanoi is difficult is an understatement because it's a real nightmare. Like there's so many small lanes and alleys not listed on Google Maps so Drivers can lose their bearings at any moment. Not to mention that like the roads also wind and twist and turn like a maze. I was actually in this situation once and I actually had to ask the residents along the street for my whereabouts. When is it better to use a bike than a car? I think a bike is superior to a car in traffic jams. Like people can either lift their bikes up on their shoulders and carry them through heavy traffic or the bikes can just fit into the space between two cars and like right through it because the same can never really happen to a car then I think it would definitely be left in a bike's dust. If you could uh, buy any car, what would you buy and why? If I could purchase any type of automobile, I would probably go for like a Mercedes because I like the nice and shiny logo, like the three-pointed star at the front. I also like how the car can just explode into a fast speed, the vroom vroom sounds or the rolls that it, it, it makes. Uh, I would imagine that people would like gasp and then their jaws would drop when they look at me just racing by on the street all right um i'm gonna stop there kevin and give you some feedback so kevin first of all really great language i love your um rich vocabulary uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always so impressed and I'm always so, I always enjoy, uh, hearing your, your choice of words. The content that you give me sometimes is a little bit unusual, but 
I'm not one to judge and the examiner is not one to judge. That's not their job. Their job is to assess your English. Um, so it's okay to give unique content. However, you have to make sure that your content is accurate. Okay, they are listening for that. Um, for these three questions, two of the answers the content was unique and accurate one was unique and kind of off topic and that was the first one i asked you where do you usually go by bicycle or car and then you said i usually use cars to reach destinations on the outskirts of my city um, outskirts of my city is really nice language or f uh, f uh, further from there <clears throat> you said not faster but further from there and then you said apart from faster trips cars also protect me from dust that part there kevin is more the advantages of cars compared to bikes um not where do you usually go by car or bike so you're kind of off topic there for that second half mm -hmm. of the answer and uh, and i couldn't help but smile in my brain when you said i also enjoy the uh roller massage functions of cars i'm like oh you must have a nice car if you've got uh, massage functions in the seats i don't know I know some cars have those, but definitely not my car. So, <laughs> so I had a, I had a, does your car have that? Does your car have the massage function? No, I'm sorry, Mr. Adrian. I just <laughs> made that out, but, but it is embarrassing I, to admit I just exposed myself. To I liked it. I'm sure like some really luxurious uh, Mercedes has that option or Audis or, you know, some of the high, high end uh, luxury cars probably have that. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I was like, ooh, I'm jealous. What kind of car does Kevin have? Um, <laughs> so I liked it. Again, IELTS Examiner is not going to judge your content, but they will judge that you're not answering the question of where do you usually go by bicycle or by car. So here, you know, stay the course, focus on the question, right? Um, I usually use my car to reach destinations on the outskirts of my city or even further. And for short trips, I use my bike, like going to my neighbor's house or my friend's house that's just a couple kilometers away or picking up uh, groceries for the day or ingredients for a dish, you know, from the store that's just a couple blocks from my house. So some, you know, stay on the question, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, Kevin, the next two, um, I'm, I want to, so as I'm speaking to Kevin here, everybody pay attention to Kevin's vocabulary because we always have some great vocabulary to learn uh, from uh, Kevin here. Um, so the next question I asked you um, is, um, is driving in your city easier or difficult? I loved your answer for this one. So you said saying that driving in my city, Hanoi, uh, first of all, I loved how you identified your city. Okay, we know that Kevin's in Vietnam. I said, Kevin, you're still in Vietnam. Everybody's like, oh, right. okay, Adrian knows Kevin a bit and he knows that he's in Vietnam. But Kevin, very respectfully, knowing that I might not remember or most of you probably don't know, he's in Hanoi, right? Said, saying that driving in my city, Hanoi, is difficult is an understatement. This is an extremely good natural use of the English language. And then you said the narrow roads are difficult to drive. They don't appear on Google Maps and they tend to whine and twist like a maze. Um, Kevin, can you tell everybody what form of speech it is when you say something like whine and twist like a maze? Um, I'm, so are you not referring to like if if your question is about like a literary device, then perhaps I believe I have used like I used uh, the simile. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And that is exactly correct. So everybody listen up. Um, Kevin, Kevin, you're also a teacher of English, right? Um, I uh, I did my bachelor's degree in uh, applying English linguistics and my master's will be in uh, teaching English. So I would say yes for the future. <laughs> Be confident, Kevin. You deserve that title. You've worked hard for it. Um, so Kevin, very cleverly, as a teacher does, tells you that he's using a literary device. And if this is a new word for you, uh, I'm not talking to you, Kevin. I'm talking to everybody else watching right now. Um, look it up. Knowing and using literary devices in your IELTS speaking and writing, I guarantee will get you more band scores when you use it correctly, but you have to use correct English literary devices. Um, there are lots of them, right, Kevin? True, that's true. Yeah. Um, and one of the most common ones are what's called similes, okay? 
Um, and similes are when you say something is like or as, okay, or similar to, right? So uh, the roads wind and twist like a maze. That's a perfect example of a simile, okay, simile. Uh, comparing um, a concept to a well-known construct. Um, for example, uh, the roads uh, wind and twist like a maze. It's beautiful. It really makes it visual. And visual language is very important for good communication. Right, Kevin? Yes, I agree 100%. <laughs> yeah, because why? Um, because we're human. We're visual. We see the world around us. That's why our favorite pastime is watching movies. We're super visual, right? So um, here, Kevin, use more visual language. And the next question, um, Kevin said, if I get, uh, no, that's not yours. It's, it was somewhere else. You said, I can um, lift up my bike uh, on my shoulder. And <laughs> I like this one. Again, I had a little internal chuckle here, Kevin. Uh, you said that uh, the cars will be left in the bike's dust. <laughs> <laughs> Usually we think about that the other way, right? The car leaves the, the bike in the dust um, and bikes tend not to kick up so much dust. But I liked this concept of how uh, the bike leaves the car in the dust. Um, and again, it's very visual language. So you have the uh, bicycle here. I'm going to draw a very rudimentary bicycle. And then you have the dust coming off of the back tires as you're quickly biking away and the car is stuck in uh, traffic um, in the dust of the bicycle, correct, Kevin? True, yes, yes. Okay, yes. That's, that's what you meant by that. I thought it was quite comical um, because it's counterintuitive. We usually see the bike being left in the car's dust, but in this case, when there's a traffic jam, the car is left in the bike's dust, um, which I thought was great. Kevin? Really yeah. good English. Keep it up. Um, and thank you so much. Um, I just want to say this this one little point. But thank you so much for showering me with your praises. I mean, your words are incredible, like validation to what I'm doing. I've been trying to like speak, but then I feel like like I felt like recently, I my performances weren't really up to par. But I, when I when I go to your class, I get so much motivation. So just I just want to thank you for that. You're very welcome. I mean, your hard work pays off, right? So. Um, your band score for those answers are easily in the uh, 8 to 8, 5. They would actually be a 9 as long as you make sure that you're not off topic. You really, and this is everybody pay attention to this, it doesn't matter how good your English is, if you go off topic, you start losing band scores quickly. In fact, a lot of examiners just keep interrupting you. So you really have to first just register the question, make sure the question is clear in your head, and then just tackle it. Start simple and then make it more and more complex right so where do you usually go by bike or car just keep it simple I go close distances or near my home by bike and I go further distances by car and then go into a more complex explanation okay Kevin yeah, understood thank All you right. thank you for volunteering and I hope uh, life uh, favors you and gives you some good fortune and we'll talk again soon okay Kevin thank you so much Mr. Adrian All right. Great. bye Kevin all right, that was Kevin. Let's give him some cheers, some happy faces, emojis. It sounds like he can use them. He sounds like he's had a couple of slight misfortunes or in life there. Um, students, uh, again, um, this chat interface is for you. It's for you to not just interact with me, but to interact with each other. So please talk to each other. There are so many great students here. Ivan, Juan Pablo, uh, both of you have great English. Reach out to each other. Deborah, uh, reach out to Anahita. Uh, talk to each other. Practice with, with each other through the website. Shift, refresh the page if your web socket locks you out. We are looking for newer uh, chat solutions for the New Year, so we're still on that. Absolutely, in the meantime, uh, we'll use what we have. Uh, for everybody who's watching, tuning in, uh, for General IELTS, check out our General IELTS website here at gieltshelp.com. I'll show you that URL in just a moment. Click on that big red button that's above my head there. Um, and for the academic IELTS, it's the blue background. It's this page here. And um, again, just click this big red button to join the premium version of the course. You won't regret it. 
There's lots and lots of content there for you that will help you to improve your English and your IELTS scores. Um, students, uh, tomorrow I'm back with task two for members, for the members chat. So uh, if you want to become a channel member, just click the join button on YouTube beside the subscribe button and reading for subscribers. So for those of you who haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free um, and you get lots and lots of help throughout the week. Uh, make sure you enable those notifications. Again, here are the URLs, aehelp.com for academic, gltshelp.com for general. Yusuf Jean, yes, it's over, unfortunately. I gotta go. You're very welcome, Fong, but I'm back tomorrow, and I hope you're here with me tomorrow as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Have an awesome rest of your day and good night. If it's getting late in your country, as for many of you, I'm sure it is. I'm Adrian, I'm signing out from Victoria, Canada. Much love to all of you wherever you are in the world right now. See you tomorrow. Bye.